Hello and welcome to News Flash on Owelike TV. I am Pamela Ajero. Now, the federal government has reiterated its commitment to providing affordable homes for civil servants in the country. The government said this will be made possible through the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Federal Integrated Staff Housing, the FISH program. This assurance was given on Thursday by the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Dr. Fola Shadi Yemi Essen. She spoke during the site inspection of the ongoing construction of 116 housing units of two bedroom semi detached bungalows at Guagualada to be allocated to core civil servants upon completion. The National Assembly has again postponed the resumption of plenary till April 30th to allow for the full renovation of both main chambers. The Senate and the House of Representatives had earlier shifted resumption after its Easter and Eid recess to April 23rd, but on Thursday the plenary resumption was rescheduled. The notice of postponement of resumption by the clerk of the Senate Chinedu Akubeze also stated the lawmakers would be resuming to the main chambers. Both houses moved to temporary chambers in September 2022 after the commencement in July 2022 of renovation work on their hallowed chambers by Verbal Construction Company Nigerian Limited. Away from that, the Inspector General of Police, Olukai Ode Egbetuko, had withdrawn all police officers attached to the embattled former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Benlo. The order for the withdrawal was contained in a policy wireless message seen by news correspondent on Friday. The Nigerian Immigration Service had earlier placed the former governor on its watch list after the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission declared him wanted in connection to an alleged case of money laundering to the tone of 80.2 billion naira. Earlier, the EFCC declared Benlo wanted acting members of the public with useful information about the former governor's whereabouts to contact any of the commission's offices across the country. Now, the immediate past governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, on Thursday failed in his bid to quash the four billion naira theft charges filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Justice E. Yangeko of the Federal High Court in Abuja dismissed the plenary objection filed by Obiano to challenge the powers of the EFCC to try him. The judge, however, granted Obiano's prayer for the release of his passport to enable him to embark on a medical trip. Justice Echo White adjoining to June 27th for the commencement of the trial said Obiano must return his passports to the court on his return from the medical trip. Obiano, who was arraigned on January 24th, faces nine counts bordering on theft of an Umbra State security vote to the tune of four billion naira. And finally, bandits have killed 23 locals in Brinigwari, local government area of Kaduna State. And this was confirmed by the Chief Press Secretary to the Interim Local Government Chairman of Brinigwari, local government area, Al Hassan Ibrahim. He said bandits in large numbers attacked Angwawa Danko village under the Kankangi constituency of the Brinigwari, local government area, and killed over 20 persons. Also confirmed. President Malam Yahaya Munsa Dansolio said 23 residents were killed with five others injured. According to him, the interim chairman Sali Suisa visited the community to offer condolences and support to the affected villagers and the injured. And he further stated that the exact number of people adopted remained unknown as many were still missing, having fled into the bush during the attack. And that's a wrap for News Flash on Uwileke TV. I am Pamela Ajiru. Follow us on our social media handles at Uwileke TV. Visit our website at www.uwileke.tv for a thrilling journey. Uwileke TV, rising star at the fairground.